Uh, welcome learners. Now today's topic I'm going to look at is air and combustion. Subtopic is oxygen gas. First of all, we begin by looking at the occurrence of oxygen. Oxygen occurs freely as a gas in air and occupies 20.9% by volume of air in the atmosphere. It also occurs in combined form with the other elements, e.g. hydrogen in water. Now, oxygen can be prepared in the laboratory and industrially by fractional distillation of liquid air. Now, in the laboratory, the reagents used to prepare oxygen include 1. Water and sodium peroxide 2. Decomposition of hydrogen peroxide using manganese peroxide as a catalyst 3. Action of it on sodium nitrates, potassium nitrates or potassium manganate 7. Now I first start by looking at uh, first we'll start looking at preparation of oxygen gas using sodium peroxide at water. Start by the equation. The equation is sodium peroxide plus water arrow sodium hydroxide plus oxygen gas. Now usually water is added into sodium sodium peroxide. Number two is to say decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Now at room temperature, hydrogen peroxide decomposes slowly to form water and oxygen gas. Therefore, to speed up decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, we need to add either manganese peroxide as a catalyst so that the role of manganese peroxide is used to speed up decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Now, to also speed up decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, we can, we can also warm. We can also warm hydrogen peroxide. Now, the equation for that is hydrogen peroxide, RO, then water plus oxygen gas. Now, sometimes you can be told to define the word catalyst. A catalyst is a substance which alters the rate of reaction but it remains chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. Now, method number three, we said action of it on either sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, or potassium manganese 7. Now, the equation for action of it on, on sodium nitrate is sodium nitrate, arrow, heat, sodium nitrate plus oxygen gas. We can also say action of it on potassium manganate 7, where the equation becomes potassium manganate 7, RO, potassium manganate 6 plus manganese oxide plus oxygen gas. Now, after preparation of oxygen gas, oxygen gas will be collected. Now, oxygen gas can be collected by two ways. One, over water methods. The reason for using that method is it oxygen gas is lightly soluble in water. Now, oxygen gas can also be collected by upward delivery. The reason for collection by upward delivery is oxygen gas is lightly oxygen gas is less denser than air. Now, before the gas is collected by upward delivery, it is advisable that the gas will be dried first by either passing through concentrated sulfuric six acids in a conical flask or anhydrous calcium chloride in a YouTube. It is advisable not to collect the initial amount of gas because it is impure. That is to say, it is mixed with air originally in the flask. Now, the, the setup diagram below shows uh, experiments used to prepare oxygen gas in the laboratory. Now, in this setup here, this setup is used to prepare dry oxygen gas. Now, you place on top here water, and then below here you place sodium peroxide. And then, this one now is called a generator. Yeah, the generator usually consists of a flask. This is a flask here. It consists of a distal funnel or a dropping funnel. 
Now, when you're using a distal funnel, it should be dipped inside the solution. Now, a dropping funnel usually has a top here. So, when you're using a dropping funnel, it should not be dipped in the solution. Once the gas is prepared here, it is dried here. I said when you're using a YouTube, this is a YouTube here, you place anhydrous calcium chloride. The role of this one here is to dry oxygen gas produced. Once the gas has been dried, it's collected by upward delivery because it is less denser than air. So this is a gas here. When oxygen gas is not required dry, this is a setup experiment used so that I place here hydrogen peroxides or water. So in the first case there, we used water and sodium peroxide. So in this case here, I place hydrogen peroxide here. And then below here, I place manganese peroxide, which is a catalyst. So the gas is generated from here. And then it is collected by over water method. This is called over water method here, whereby this is a trough, this is a water, this is called a BIF shelf, this is called a gas chair, and then the oxygen gas collected here. Now the setup diagram for preparation of oxygen gas by action of heat on sodium nitrate is shown below. This is here sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate or potassium manganese 7. And then it is heated here. When it's heated in a test tube, this is called a test tube, the gas is produced here. And then it is collected by over water methods. This I say is called a trough. This is water, there's a gas chair, and that's oxygen gas. Now, in the the next thing we want to look at is the industrial manufacture of oxygen gas. Now, here you are supposed to the parts used in the five parts. There's what they call filters, absorption tower, cooler, compressor, and fractional distillation chamber. Fractional distillation chamber. Now, air is first passed through what you call the filters. The filters is used to remove dust particles by a process called electrostatic precipitation. Then, after that, air is again passed through the, the absorption tower, which contains concentrated sodium hydroxide. The role of sodium hydroxide is to absorb carbon dioxide gas in air. Now, after that, the air is passed through the cooler. The condition of the cooler is temperature of negative 25 degrees Celsius. The role of the cooler is used to remove water paper. The form in which the water paper is removed is ice form or solid form. The reason is because the temperature in the cooler, that is i.e. negative 25, is below the melting point of water, which is zero. Now, why is it necessary to remove water vapor and carbon dioxide before the fractional distillation process? The, the water and carbon dioxide may solidify and cause blockage of pipes. Now, after the removal of water vapor and the cooler, the air is passed through the compressor. The role of the compressor, the conditions at the compressor is temperature of negative 200 degrees Celsius and pressure of 200 atmospheres. The role of the compressor is to liquefy air and also to remove helium and neon. Now, how is the air liquefied in the compressor? The residual air is compressed to a pressure of 200 atmosphere. Then repeated expansion and contraction at a temperature of negative 200 liquefies air. The air that's liquefied is nitrogen, oxygen, and argon. So the liquid air is pumped into the fractional distillation chamber. Now what happens there? The liquid air is heated so that nitrogen the low boiling point of negative 106 degrees Celsius, distill off first, followed by argon, negative 186 degrees Celsius, followed by argon, temperature is negative 186 degrees Celsius, and then lastly is oxygen gas, 
which has a boiling point of negative 183 degrees Celsius. So the flowchart below shows the industrial manufacture of oxygen gas by fractional distillation of liquid air. So now air enters this point, this is called the filters here, filters remove dust particles, then air free of dust particles enters the absorption tower which contains sodium hydroxide, then air free of carbon dioxide enters the cooler, the cooler is a temperature of negative 25, it solidifies, it removes water vapor in ice form or solid form. Then air free of water enters the compressor. The conditions here is negative 200 degrees Celsius and pressure of 200 atmospheres. Then here you remove helium and neon. So liquid air enters what you call the fractional distillation chamber. So the first gas to be removed is nitrogen, negative 196 degrees Celsius. The next one is argon negative 186 degrees celsius the last one is oxygen negative 186 sorry negative 183 degrees celsius learners that's the end of the lesson the next lesson we're going to look at the the physical properties and chemical properties of oxygen gas